talk about uh, uh, unusual condition called Takotsubo cardiopathy. Uh, it's a fascinating uh, condition that occurs mainly in postmenopausal women. This is a form of emotional stress induced catecholamine mediated acute severe heart failure. The Takotsubo uh, refers to uh, refers to the a shape of a, uh, a pottery sort of ceramic thing that's used for trapping octopuses uh, and uh, um, uh, the Japanese uh, uh, investigator who saw Taka and reported Takatsubo cardiopathy thought that um, that the heart looked like a Takatsubo. I don't know how you trap octopuses with a Takatsubo. I'm, I'm guessing they're just stupid and they put their heads in it and you can imagine they, they can't I don't know. But anyway, that's a Takotsubo. And uh, what you see is uh, that during uh, systole, when the heart is supposed to be contracting, and, uh, all, all the parts of the heart are contracting. Instead, the base of the heart contracts. And that's how you get the neck of the Takotsubo. But the apex of the heart doesn't contract. Uh, that's bad. And... Uh, this, uh, this could look like a heart attack or, uh, or a severe acute heart failure. But if you measure levels of catecholamines, uh, especially adrenaline, they're sky high in people who have Takotsubo cardiopathy. And this is a reversible, a reversible cause of acute heart failure. Um, I have a feeling that people who survive Takotsubo cardiopathy are susceptible to have future episodes, but I really don't know. The hallmark of baroreflex failure is not orthostatic hypotension. The hallmark of baroreflex failure is excessive blood pressure variability. And these are, uh, these are tracings of blood pressure over 24 hours in three patients who had baroreflex failure as a late consequence of radiation treatment for uh, lymphomas. In other words, uh, as an adolescent or something like that, uh, a person had uh, lymphoma like Hodgkin's or something like that, and then had uh, the usual treatments that include a widespread irradiation, including irradiation of the neck. Uh, and then the person is cured until years later, the patient presents with uh, extreme swings of blood pressure. And uh, Yoni Shirabi, who worked with me, uh, discovered this association. He found that, uh, that people who had uh, baroreflex failure and his blood pressure variability had a history of treatment with uh, irradiation of the neck years before. The concept is that radiation treatment uh, causes uh, inflammation and then scarring of the blood vessels. And remember, the carotid sinus baroreceptors are at the, at the crotch of the, where the internal and uh, uh, external carotid arteries are formed. Uh, they're stretch receptors. And so if the baroreceptors are kind of encased in this pipe, uh, the, the brain isn't gonna know when the blood pressure is changed. And so the, the, uh, that's the connection between uh, uh, excessive blood pressure variability and a history of irradiation of the neck. I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant discovery, and I think it's been uh, replicated since then. Uh, there are cases of, uh, of uh, what seems to be POTS, chronic fatigue, and so forth, that are associated with uh, bilateral adrenomedullary hyperplasia. The adrenal gland is arranged kind of like a bonbon. The inside, the inside, the uh, medulla, uh, from the Latin word for marrow, is where uh, adrenaline comes from. The, uh, the outer part of the adrenal gland, called the cortex, 
uh, for the Latin word for, uh, for rind or like bark on a tree uh, is where uh, steroids come from. But there's a good reason to understand why in humans uh, this, the adrenal gland has this interesting architectural arrangement. But uh, I think that's what you're seeing, what you're seeing here. The, most of this fluorodopamine derived activity is in the medulla of the adrenal gland. Uh, I don't know what, what's cause and what's effect here, uh, but it's something to consider in a patient who has uh, orthostatic intolerance and high uh, circulating levels of, uh, of adrenaline. Spinal cord transection. Here's a, uh, a, high, a high lesion, and uh, you remember the vagus nerve is a, is a cranial nerve. It's coming from the, coming from the brain stem. Uh, you're not gonna have a spinal cord transection that's gonna uh, be high enough to involve the vagus nerve, because you'd be dead. Um, what that means is that uh, in a patient with spinal cord transection, the vagus nerve is intact, intact. So, uh, uh, but, the, but the sympathetic outflow, which is coming from the thoracolumbar spinal cord, that's gone. <clears throat> so there's an association between the, uh, the cranial part of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is absolutely intact, and the uh, sympathetic noradrenergic uh, outflow, which is importantly regulating uh, blood pressure. He also mentioned, uh, he, he used colonic distension, but in, uh, in patients who have spinal cord uh, uh, injury or transection, I think uh, uh, a more common problem is paroxysmal hypertension upon filling of the bladder. Uh, uh, this is called autonomic dysreflexia. And the idea is that the, the transection is here. If you had, uh, if you had a, a input from the bladder going up this way, it's possible you could have something that looks like an axon reflex. Remember that QSART uh, for the, uh, looking at the sympathetic cholinergic system, it's based on an axon reflex. You could think sort of an analogous kind of thing here. And as a result, norepinephrine is released big time and it causes paroxysmal hypertension. It's paroxysmal hypertension because the barrel reflex is screwed up. The ability to modulate uh, vascular uh, tone by the sympathetic neurogenergic system has been disrupted. The barrel reflex doesn't exist. I mean, it exists from the point of view of the vagus nerve, but who cares? Not from the point of view of sympathetic neurocirculatory regulation. So, and people with spinal cord injury, bladder distension is dangerous and uh, can cause uh, severe and uh, morbid uh, hypertension.